So today we're just gonna break down this animation I made a few weeks ago, I think. So this is it, it's really just a car driving through a tunnel. I actually just made this to test my new uh, GPU graphics card. So yeah, so I'm just gonna break it down in this video so you kind of understand it. So it's not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial, it's just gonna be a breakdown of this video just so you get this type of mindset that I have and how, how I would do this kind of thing in general. Um, so yeah, this is more a mindset video than a step-by-step -step video. So we're just gonna jump right into Blender. So first I'm just gonna show you the overall scene. So you see in here, we got the car, then we got the tunnel. The tunnel is made of multiple little pieces of tunnels. Um, so just like little building blocks. Um, then first we're just gonna go into the animation. So the animation looks like this, as you've just seen in the animation video. And one thing maybe you have noticed, if I move away, the camera, uh, the car doesn't actually move, the car doesn't actually drive, the car also doesn't have any suspension, so there's no need for a rig, nothing. All that's happening here is that the tires are spinning and that the tunnel is moving. So this is maybe one thing you would do different that I usually tend to do this way, because one big benefit of doing it this way your car won't drive into nowhere, so your car is always on zero, so in the middle of your scene, so it's really easy to edit, even though the animation is like uh, running along. And one big benefit here is you can add light sources at the car, so you can light the car without having to like animate the light sources and move the light sources. So you could also like uh, parent the light sources to the car, um, uh, but I just think it's easier this way. So you could do it the other way around. I tend to do it this way around because I rather put focus onto the car than onto the tunnel. So I rather just let the tunnel just go and leave the scene than the car itself. So this is how I would do it. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, then we're just gonna. Uh, actually, we can maybe also talk about the camera first. So the camera, as you've seen, is pretty simple. Um, nothing too fancy, but if you see here, if I would move the camera, like it just doesn't look cool. Because there's one thing that I did here, it's hard to see, but you see the car is bouncing a little bit. So the car itself isn't actually bouncing, as you can see here again, like it's very static. Uh, the camera is actually bouncing. So the way I let the camera bounce is pretty easy. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, but there's modifiers for curves also. So not just normal modifiers, there's also curve modifiers. And what I used here, as you can see, when the camera is selected, I use the noise uh, modifier. So uh, yeah, with that you can just put noise onto the curve. So if I play it and I just make this a bit stronger, you see the camera really starts shaking. So uh, on the, and actually you can even see here if I really scroll it up, you see there's a noise here. And this is only on Z, so I'm not, um, you can put it on any axis basically, but I just like the Z axis in this scenario so i'm just giving a little realistic handheld shake to it so it's just a bit more realistic uh, the other thing i did i didn't as you see there's not very many keyframes on the camera itself because i didn't keyframe two locations of the camera actually the camera if i go to its parent is an empty object here see the camera moves with it so what i'm doing as you can see um, the empty is rotating so all i did is just rotating the empty object which the camera is a child of. So it's just way easier to have a smooth camera movement this way. Um, yeah, because otherwise it would have been a bit annoying. So I'm not using any constraints, no look ads, no targets, nothing. It's really just a parent child camera to empty object with some rotation. So actually pretty simple. So yeah, next thing is uh, the tunnel itself it is also surprisingly simple. So if I go back to non-material mode and just the mesh mode. So you see it's very low poly and uh, of course I used the mirror modifier so I really just modeled half of the tunnel. This is just a plane. Uh, here I put in a little bit more effort and I made this pipe structure. Um, then I got these super high-end modeled lights that probably took I don't know, like two months to model. I uh, know it's like just a cube, really. It's 
surprisingly simple. And then you see this crazy air vent I modeled. Uh, it's a cylinder with like extrusion. So it's really super simple. I got these super high end light sources on the sides. Uh, also just cubes. I didn't even put them on the wall directly. I just place them straight into the wall. So you see this is way more simple than you might think. So, but why does it look so good? Uh, it's because the textures, but even my textures aren't crazy. Um, so there's no dirt maps, nothing. It's really, if I go through uh, like this, it's just tiles from textures.com. Uh, if I go <laughs> show you this, it's the same deal. So I got two maps here, I think. Yeah, so this is the bump map. I'm using here, this is the color map. So I just used the color map, a bump map. I didn't even change the roughness. <laughs> um, so yeah, on the wall, I did change the roughness a little bit. I guess I decided to use a curve modifier or curve node here. I muted it though, so I didn't actually use it. So just using a roughness map, really basic color map and a bump map. Uh, all from textures.com, so I didn't design these maps. Um, then here, so you see these pipes. Uh, these are kind of modeled, so they got this three-dimensional look, but all I did was basically, um, so if I chop a cut, wherever the original model is, where is it? Ah, there. So here also you see I mirrored and arrayed it. Um, so if I go in here and I do a cut here, or actually multiple cuts, I do multiple cuts here, I take one edge, this one, I press O or just click here. Um, as you see, I'm using a sphere as a proportional editing. So if I move this and make it small, you see I already get this pipe shape. So this was also very quickly done, super easy. Um, yeah, and the texture um, looks like this. As you can imagine, it's a picture of pipes. <laughs> Um, all I did was use this texture also with the curve modifier that once again, I didn't really use. I just inverted the whole thing to control roughness a little bit. Otherwise it's really just color, not even a bump map. Uh, so the ceiling, uh, similar deal. Uh, what did I do here? Mm, yeah, so it's just cement and I guess the fitting cement height map. Uh, that's really it. Uh, the light sources, I didn't even struggle to add any texture. It's really only emission, but it's not any emission because this would look cheaper than it is. Uh, I used the black body node, set a temperature, so this gives it a realistic color. Um, yeah, so it's not just white. Yeah, and to be honest, that's pretty much it. Uh, on the sidewalk, yeah, I added this gray texture here. A little bevel. Um, the road looks complex, but it's just a plane. So I took a nice texture, uh, also from textures.com. Um, so I used the color texture, looks like this. So a road. I used the roughness texture, you see here. I used curves. So this is smooth, non rough. The white is very rough, so the road, so you get these puddles. Um, and then the normal map, or a bump map in this case. Uh, now blenders crashing so yeah uh, pretty simple um, so you see of course it still looks good uh, but it also shows good looking things don't have to take a lot of work you just have to do the right things so like for example these pipes you know like I'm just dependent on a good pipe texture and I know that most tunnels have pipes there I know that most tunnels have tiles on the side, I know that most uh, tunnels have like these little reflective lights. They have these lights on the roof. They've got these um, air vents. Um, a sidewalk isn't perfectly squared, has like this bevel on the side. So I'm just doing like the most relevant things. Um, and that makes it look very realistic, like right away. Like I could go into more detail and it would be even a bit more realistic, but I tend to just cover the key parts of a realistic scene, because uh, usually enough, because compared to the effort, this was like really not much effort, as you can see by this tunnel, I don't know, this maybe took, I don't know, really not long. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just did the right things. Um, yeah, and the tunnels arrayed along the road. <sighs> Here's the car, so yeah, maybe the last thing to mention is the light sources. I really do this by feeling. Um, I usually just use area lights 
yeah, I don't really know what to say. I use some spotlights in the front. I use some spotlights that are red in the back. So I get this reflection in the street. Um, but yeah, like really uh, one thing to remember when spinning wheels is uh, the disc moves, but the caliper doesn't. This is one common thing people do wrong. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and then you just render it. Uh, my render settings, as you maybe noticed, the quality wasn't super great because I didn't really feel like waiting long. So I used GPU, of course. I'm on a 2080 uh, RTX graphics card. So not crazy graphics card, but a good graphics card. Um, yeah, my samples, 200 samples, not like 2000, 5000. So I'm depending on a denoiser. Um, my resolution was just HD, 24 frames per second. I used the JPEG uh, sequence, so not just a video. So in case the render crashed or something, I still had the frames left and can keep rendering. Um, I used JPEGs because I didn't feel like saving big files because I just made this for fun. I have maybe one thing to also go into. I, of course, one last thing, uh, motion blur. <laughs> Don't forget motion blur. Motion blur is super important. And also next to motion blur, I'm sure I used depth of field. And yes, I did. I used the f-stop of 1.4 because in a dark tunnel like this in real life, you'd probably need 1.4 or 1.8 f-stop without using a high ISO, which would destroy the quality. So I tried to go with realistic values here. Uh, so yeah, it just looks like you maybe have filmed it with a real camera because if you don't have depth of field or a high f-stop in real life you would probably have a lot of motion blur so a low f-stop so i tried to go with the realistic values here um yeah my focal length is 35 millimeters that's very typical for a real camera you could use 50 if you want to be closer but the space is quite tight so you'd probably go with 35 millimeters also in real life um, yeah, so and then maybe just quickly go over the car like it looks like a crazy car paint, but it's actually not uh, It's just the principal shader. I just set a free-handed color here uh, I bumped clear code to two and the last video actually someone asked how I slide these values over one uh, You just type two or you type ten or type any number. So that's how you go over values uh, Metallic of course is one. This is a metallic car paint uh, roughness is 0.4 and that's all I said here. Never touch specular. Don't touch all this other stuff. Uh, this you can delete. I don't even know why it's there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, everything else is really just nothing fancy. The carbon here is just UV mapping and a carbon texture. I wasn't even fancy enough to add any normal maps. You should if you want a nice carbon. So. I just did this really quick, uh, as you can see, but still, uh, yeah, like it's quickly done, but still looks good. So that's what I like most. That's how you keep up the fun factor. So yeah, uh, if you have any more questions about this scene, I guess just comment below. I'll try to like answer. I don't have all too many comments, so it shouldn't be a problem to answer all of them. Uh, so yeah, just ask anything you want. Maybe I can make a step-by-step -step tutorial on topic like this. Of course, it's going to be hard to just rebuild it exactly, but I can maybe make a similar scene step-by-step uh, -step if anyone wants to watch that. Otherwise, I think this is enough knowledge that you need to recreate a scene like this, if you, of course, know the basics of Blender. Uh, maybe one last thing you maybe don't know yet that I also wanted to make a video about. So you saw I made a JPEG sequence. Um, and if you make a JPEG sequence, you have to make an MP4 at some point. So in Blender, there's actually a feature for it. It's called Sequencer. You can make two windows out of it. Then you can do a preview here. So here you would add your images. Um, here, image sequence, you know, you can add them. And then in the export settings, this time when you render, it's going to render out the sequencer and you can change it to um, MP4. So under the render settings, you would go to MPEG video, you go to encoding, you would go to MP4. Uh, the keyframe interval, that's always about half of your frame rate. Um, so this is the default setting, uh, 18th, and I've got 24 frames per second. So that's totally fine. I think 18 is better for 30 frames per second, doesn't matter. But if you would do 60 frames per second, you should maybe bump this up to 30, just the thing to keep in mind. Otherwise, you can just keep everything as it is. Doesn't really make a big difference. Uh, the way you light the car, and the way you use the denoiser will make a way bigger difference. So don't care too much about exporting videos. Um, 
it will be just fine on the standard settings. So I hope you liked a video like this. Uh, I haven't made a video like this before, like a breakdown video where I just talk, <laughs> but I thought maybe it's interesting to some people to just kind of understand like how I make things from the outside without making a two hour tutorial step by step on how to do it, just to understand the full picture of this project. Um, and maybe it's enough for you to recreate something similar. And also I just tried to show you that a lot of things are way more easy than you might think on first glance. You just kind of have to know what the necessary steps are. And once you know them, it's actually surprisingly simple. Um, it's really for me a no brainer by now. Um, Maybe for you it isn't yet, but it's probably nearer in the future than you might think. Because if you see this as a beginner, you might think it will take forever till I know how to do this. Uh, actually, it, it goes way faster than you think. You just have to learn the right things, do the right things, and it's surprisingly easy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I talked way too much so goodbye have fun and that's also the most important thing that's also the most important thing about this project this was a very fun project because it was quick and fun i didn't waste time on boring annoying things just always do fun stuff and you'll get good pretty fast so goodbye